All right, she is off. Is this as pretty on our camera as it is on Matt's? Look at this thing. It's a little dirty, but I remember him saying that it came back from the stereo shop and it needed kind of like a wash. It's got fingerprints on it and stuff, but I mean, look at this thing. Yeah, it sounds just like a brand new Civic. Really short shifter in here. So let me make sure I'm clear here. All right, so the first thing we are gonna do is bring it up to temperature. It's cold, it came on a trailer. So we are gonna bring it up to temperature and do a base dyno run, just so we can kind of see where we are. Uh, from what I remember, I'm gonna look under the hood, but it's 100% stock. It did have a header on it, but he put the factory manifold back on it. Every Civic comes in, this is broken. This doesn't hinge, it pulls straight out. If you're gonna mess with one of these, put your fingers all the way to the top and pull backwards. Don't try and bend it this way and don't bend it like it's a hinge. Every Civic for the longest time comes in. This is broken. I don't wanna see that happen to your car because you probably can't get this. Um, everything looks clean under here. I'm gonna change some of this stuff. He, he, he's kind of give us free reign. Of course, we're doing a B18C, but this blue hose, I know he don't like that. I don't like it. And it's there and the blue couplers, they're gonna go. Um, obviously, the res uh, reservoirs right here. I want to talk to Matt and see if we can do something with that. So I do like the wheel combination he's got on there. It looks a little bit aggressive. Uh, looks like somebody's been trying to roll. Yeah, somebody's rolled the fenders and put a dimple in here. It looks like it's pretty aggressive in the front. Looks like it has a bit of negative camber to get those to fit. Again, I'll be honest, I haven't followed his channel. I am too busy doing what we do. I know he's probably talked about this. Uh, feeling here, it looks like the fenders have been rolled. So maybe somebody's tried to roll them and kinked them a little bit. It's, it's, it's one of those things you have to massage. You can't bend the fenders. You have to creep up on them very, very gradual. Some are gonna say it's a shame to take this motor out, but you know what? This car is so much better with a little bit more power. And the fact that it unbolts and bolts back in with no permanent change, it's its like it never happened. And providing you take your time and, you know, be nice taking it out. You don't rest tools up here or do any of this stuff. Take the motor out of the bottom. All right, so 84 degrees. It's a nice day on the dyno. We're going to go ahead and get our baseline run. We'll do a third gear run and we will see where we are at. You ready, George? All right, let's do it. and 101 torque. All right, so I'll just change it to RPM so you can see it, but you can see how the low cam kind of falls off and the high cam comes in. All right, so I backed it up pretty much the same, 139 out of 100. All right, so the goodies that he sent in the back to be put on, coil radiator, uh, spoon, uh, spark plug wires, thermostat probably, radiator hoses, and I remember talking to him about this master cylinder. Uh, this should be the Type R, should be the one inch. Yeah, he put bigger calipers on, and I talked to him about it. He said the brake had a lot of travel, which is just because of the uh, larger pistons in the spoon calipers, and then drain plugs, cap, um, sensors, radiator tie. We'll take all this out and lay it out. All right, so Matt kind of agreed. It, it's pretty good when you're working with somebody that has the same kind of taste. These, obviously, there's not a whole, not a whole lot of places to put them. They're kind of big. He's got them zip-tied here because basically it doesn't really know where to put them. We don't want to screw it to the firewall. We don't want to put it here. They're kind of a fancy piece, so we don't want to bury it down on that lower subframe. So even though this is a Mugen bar and it's, ooh, it's super expensive, it's still a fabricated bar. We're gonna weld some brackets on the bottom side of this so you can't really see it and run the brackets up the back and then put these guys right here so they're in kind of a focal point so you can see them. 
and that way we're not drilling the car. You can always replace that bar, you can't replace the car, so we don't want to drill it in any way. Not all intakes are created equal, look at that. Somebody's <laughs> done a, a pretty terrible job of piecing that thing together. So the engine is out. We kept it as complete as uh, we could because obviously it's going to stay with the car. We don't need to change, uh, take anything off that we don't need to. We did change injectors in the new motor. We're doing S2000 injectors to give us a little bit more fuel capacity. And we need the distributor off this one. Other than that, this one can pretty much stay together. So this is the factory harness and it's so refreshing to see him in such good shape it is going to get honda at s300 but obviously everything needs to function and be working correctly we are providing hasport mounts there's a few things we went over with matt and said what do you want to do do you want to do this do you want to do that uh hasport mounts the full kit the newer ones that have the allens in here so it's a much cleaner mount and he supplied obviously all these sensors we're going to change all the different pieces over this is for the fan control the thermostat and all these we're slowly switching everything over on this motor right here so this motor was 27,000 miles now our japanese jdm motor it's very very clean it wouldn't surprise me if the miles are not that far off because everything looks so good but what we are going to do is keep the starter from the si it's essentially the same you put them side by side it's identical but this one had such a sweet sound when you hit the key it started had that real nice whine sound we're going to keep that we want to keep as much of the basically if you have uh, two motors we're trying to keep the best of the best we're not going to nickel and dime and start pulling all these bolts i think we should leave this motor alone ours is so nice already i'll show you it again but again i don't want to pick it apart but the alternator and starter we are going to keep fuel rail we're going to leave alone we are running s2000 injectors in ours to give us a little bit more fuel capacity so you can see on our motor right here all of our bolts are very very clean and it is original so i don't want to take every bolt off um this is the starter that came off the b16 and again it's identical to one i just showed you already changed the thermo switch and uh, the thermostat distributor is going on this so the wiring is correct because there's two different type plugs and ours came damaged which is somewhat normal when they strap them down the strap was across ours and damaged our cap and our rotor so luckily we're using this one uh, bigger throttle body. This is a 68 millimeter throttle body and obviously the Type R manifold that's going on here. George is knee deep in a partial wire tuck. We're calling it partial because we're kind of cleaning it up. I'm not a fan. I already said that. We're not tucking the wire. If you ever have a problem and it's a tucked harness, the, har the problem is usually the tucked harness and then you're fixing not a Honda issue, the last guy issue. I've been doing this a long time we're not a wire tuck fan the problem turns into you know what contact the last guy that worked on your car he's the one that caused see if it he's willing to to trace his uh tucks yeah where did that big lump of wire that used to be here where did it go that's yeah. where the problem is so clean up and it takes a little bit of extra time air temp sensor is going to be changed it's in the manifold and we want to keep it clean we're going to be building a titanium intake for it so we don't want to put a sensor in that we want to keep it clean so the car over here we've already put in the hasport mounts these are a three mount system it takes it from a five to a three these are much stiffer but they're a 62a which is the softer compound we've had really good luck with these they're actually in george's car and they're a very nice mount system and again perfect lining and they're a lifetime warranty so there is cheaper options but this is the best uh, type r master cylinder we talked about that the factory one is much smaller so if you think of it as like a leverage the amount of fluid movement in here it doesn't take as much movement to get the same movement on the other end which means a pedal doesn't have to travel as far this is a one inch bore factory one is seven eighths which doesn't sound like a lot but you're thinking of the whole piston travel here going from a seven eighths it's one eighth larger bore which of course multiplied by the circumference here it's quite a lot of fluid movement so the pedal doesn't have to travel as far to get it to actually initially bite on the calipers so the spoon calipers they are a four piston which if you look at it this way you've got basically a piston on each side so the fluid has to fill all of those so when you're pressing the pedal down you're essentially pushing pressure on all four to squeeze the pads well times this by two 
you have a lot of uh, a lot of pedal travel before the brakes actually work it's a pretty common thing we've seen it we used to put these on a lot of cars back in the day a beautiful caliper but it's something that nobody seemed to know they just buy them and put them on and then complain that don't work they say clean in some of this subframe it's just dusty but while it's apart why not give it a quick clean i know if matt was here he'd probably tell us to hold off and he'd probably get in here and polish this <laughs> he's probably watching this laughing because he would as soon as he sees that's dirty he's gonna go how can i clean that so i'm gonna go ahead and clean it maybe i don't know hit it with a coat of wax i'm probably as crazy as he is All right, so <laughs> I'm waiting on George doing the harness, so I was like, why not make that look a little prettier? Looks well, good, doesn't it? All right, so motor is in, all the mounts are tight, axles are on. Now it's time to put the header on. If you've done these before, of course, you know it's a one-piece header. It goes from the bottom. So I'll be intrigued to see how close it sits to the pan. Hopefully it sits pretty tight. All right, so we have the header in. The header fits really nice. We're gonna wipe that down before we start the engine, of course. Radiator's in, spoon hoses are in. And we talked about doing that partial tuck, but we have an idea of how we're cleaning it up little by little. I see some of the wiring down here, rather than it going up on top of the shock tower, it's kind of routed under here. Same on here, there was a bracket. Now, I'm gonna save all these brackets and bag them so he can take these back as if I was doing this, I would want all those wires back on brackets. They don't, they don't bother me too much being up in the air. They're pretty clean already, but again, that's just kind of what he wanted. So we're doing that. Some of the wiring down here, uh, the bracket down here, some of the lines going across the firewall, the throttle body. There's a few, there's four brackets in here were removed. And it's basically like a little standoff, a bracket comes up and then the wiring will sit here. There's a bracket here uh, removed, another one over here. One here, the throttle cables kind of sit up high. Now they're uh, laying down here. Um, they're on. They're not metal on metal, but I might put a piece of uh, vacuum line around there just to give them a little bit of cushion so it doesn't scratch up that shock tower. And of course, the wire that did go across here is now looped underneath. So this is what we have so far. Uh, Matt wanted a titanium intake, which obviously I'm a big fan of too. If you saw our Integra, we did full titanium piping for the intercooler and full titanium exhaust. It's super nice material, it looks pretty. Of course it's light, it's obviously more exotic when you look at it, it's just an immediate uh, giveaway that it's something special when you see it. And of course, the pie cuts, it gives you some welding practice. All right, so first start, you gonna hit the key. Ready? Yep. belts loose stuff. Good in here? Yeah, oil pressure uh, means it immediately went out. Nice. This again is just our base, but it's not rattling. Is it it's sitting... not oh it's sitting half on the lift, okay. Yeah. Oh the sun's nice in here. Just doing like an initial break-in, keeping the RPMs down. It's got conventional oil in right now. So we're just doing like an initial break-in, just break the rings in. It's got a good vacuum already. So we've got a pretty good vacuum already, went for the fence to kick on right now. All right, start to get a little bit of color in our header already. Look how pretty that looks. That is super nice. So the motor sounds good. Again, initial break-in. Everyone does their own break-in. Everyone's gonna tell you something different. So I'm not gonna tell you how I do it because all it's gonna do is have a whole bunch of people tell you how they do it, which I guess that's fine too. Um, working on the intake right now. Everything is good. There's no leaks, no uh, hiccups. We still have to come up with a system to mount these. We're gonna probably build something off the strut bar uh, intake we are working on right now. This is just the ugly valve cover so we can tune it. This is cut so we can access these cam gears. We're going to dial in the cam gears and get basically the best power uh, curve. We're not going to be making a lot of power on these. There's uh, Skunk 2 tuner 
twos. All right, so I never talked about it, but long story, Matt said, hey, I'm building this car. I'm building it like I would build it back in 2000. I want to do a V18 C1, maybe hop it up a little bit, nothing too crazy. It needs to drive every day. I don't want to run it on race gas or anything extreme. Just has to be normal. So we kind of put a package together. Didn't really know how crazy it was going to get with this car. I'll be honest, I thought it was going to be just a mild build. And it seems like he has got really enthusiastic with this and gone uh, way into the deep end, which is cool. But let me just bring you back a couple of months and show you the motor that we chose and what we did to it. You ready? So we've got the motor for Matt's Project Civic. This is a 98 spec Type R B18C. Cost comes with the LSD transmission. The motor looks in really good shape. This is from our supplier that usually does a really good job of hand picking these motors. And because we buy quite a few, not saying that we get preferential treatment, but usually if you're a dealer, you tend to get a little bit better of a motor than than the average you know guy calling in because most independent buyers buy one as a shop you buy many so they tend to give you a little bit better option if there is one so we're going to tear this one down go through it we're going to basically go through the head refresh the head the idea on this build is not to make a ton of horsepower make it a super high compression motor that we can't use he wants basically a b18c of course but we're doing a mild build we're going to bump the compression with some PR3 pistons. We're going to do some Skunk 2, Tuner 2 cams, and the Skunk Alpha springs and retainers and LMAs. That's just a really good proven combination. We've ran these on many cars. George had these on his Integra, and I know around 40 plus thousand miles on that combination. So it's, it's a proven combination to make some more power, more mid-range, without really compromising too much of the long-term drivability. So I've already broke these loose. Otherwise you would have to break them loose in an order. You don't want to start at one end and work across. Same as tightening them. Tighten them, you start from the inside and work out. Now we don't recommend this at home. In fact, we don't recommend it in a shop. But we're feeling strong. Right? Yeah. This is where it doesn't go on the stand and we take the stander apart. Got it? Got the pen? Yeah. So that can be a lot more fun than we just showed. You do this on your own, you pick it up, you push on the stand, and the stand stand starts <laughs> rolling away. Alright, so the head is off. It's got the factory pistons. Everything looks pretty much normal in there. We're gonna remove the pistons, clean the cylinders, and just check it over and measure them. We're gonna measure each cylinder. So we are not gonna bore this over size. What we are gonna do is measure the cylinders and make sure they're within spec, make sure they're not tapered, they're not oval, they're not egg-shaped in any way. Then we will have the block honed and install the new pistons. If they're out of spec, of course, we're going to have to bore oversize. I don't like to bore over if we don't have to, because as you see on a Honda sleeve, the different coloration right here, this is the aluminum. The different color here is the steel liner. You're actually cutting into that steel liner. Even though you're only cutting a small amount, you are making the cylinders a little bit smaller and of course, less serviceable in the future if it needs to be bored. Saying that, if it does, we would typically only go half a millimeter over. But let's take the pistons out, let's take our measuring equipment out, and we'll check it and see how close it is. So we're going to have this completely stripped down and refreshed, do a, obviously a new valve job, new valve stem seals, check the guides, make sure everything was in spec, and obviously clean up these combustion chambers. Uh, these often get bead blasted, and it takes a lot of the rough areas out, so it makes it actually a little bit better for higher compression. We're only going to up the compression about half a point, but of course, Smoothing these chambers out helps with pre-ignition. All right, so now it's upside down. I wanted to show you something. This is 
Type R only. This is rather than having this, uh, the two small supports here and the sheet metal cover, it's a full aluminum brace for the engine block to the transmission. It almost finishes off the whole shape of the transmission right here. But this is Type R only. One negative to this occasionally is some of the headers that you buy don't fit with his. They end up running into this. Depends what type you get. Not sure what Matt is running, but worst case, if it doesn't fit, we can either cut a little bit of this webbing out here, which will still keep some rigidity, or worst case, we put the regular GSR style, which just has the brackets here, and then there is a small one right here. These are definitely helpful. The funny thing is, is I used to see people use these, and I never really thought they were that handy. I think we use them a lot. Look at that. That was until our sweet Bjorn gave them to us. Look at that, that's pretty clever. It is, isn't it? I never knew I needed to do that until you just did it. Yeah. Sweet, so we're going to take all this apart and let's take a look at the bottom end, of course. If you know what this looks like under here, once this comes out, there is going to be a windage tray, then there is going to be a crank girdle that comes out, then we'll be able to see the crank and, of course, the rods. So this is what it looks like under the windage tray. This is the girdle that I'm speaking of. This is on Integra GSRs and Type R's. It's not on a B16. Uh, one of the things that we used to do building B20 VTEX back in the day was to machine our end caps so we can use the OE crank girdle, which is this guy right here. Your strainer picks up here. This is your oil pump. You guys know what this looks like. We're going to take this off, take the rods out, double check everything. We're going to look at the bearings. We're going to look at the crank. We want to make sure everything is 100% before we go any further and measure everything. It'll take a little bit more time, but we'll show you a little bit of the process. All right, so we have the pistons out. One thing to notice is every single one of them was a 24 rod and the crank has the same on each one, each letter is the same. The letter and number correspond with a bearing code. What you do is you order the bearing from Honda, then you measure the bearing just to verify it. It's usually pretty close. We are going to reuse these rods. We're going to check and make sure everything's good. But to be honest, looking at this, I mean the motor doesn't have a lot of miles on it. Looking at it, it's it's uh, it's surprisingly clean. Now, of course. We're only going to up the compression a little bit. We're sticking with cast pistons just so we don't have to deal with a little bit of rattle from forged pistons. Forged pistons are great if you're going to be making a ton of power, but we're going for a more OE build. So we're going to be going with a PR3 piston, which will bump the compression when we're done. We're hoping to have about half a point, maybe 0.6 of a point when we're done for basic good drivability on 93 octane without having any issues in the hot weather of course make a little bit more power a little bit more torque with a higher compression so even though we know these motors i used to build tons and tons and tons of these back in the day between us i think we could put these motors together blindfold in a different room but it's still nice to just bag each thing not only does it just help organize you as you're building the motor, you pull out a bag, you put all the bolts in, it's kind of just like a nice little system. So that's what we're doing right now. Each individual part, taking it apart, cleaning it, bagging it, help us get organized. All right, so it's really hard to catch this in the light. My light keeps reflecting and it's either over bright or over dim. But the bores are really, really clean. They've still got all the scribing in there. There we go. It still looks like it was just done. But we're gonna go ahead and clean it, measure it, and see where we are. Taking the cylinder head apart so we can send it out. And look at that, the VTEC gasket and filter look brand new. Look at that. It's almost like somebody has sent us a brand new motor and they just want to see what we say. It's like they ran it for 
15 miles and then said okay set it to LHT so if they are really impressed because that is I think that's the cleanest one I've ever seen so we're going to take this apart take the rocker assembly out completely makes working on the head much easier plus we'll make sure that they're 100% clean and then the head can be cleaned better too there's no little areas that anything can be trapped in there All right, we're getting close to sealing up the bottom end. I have the pickup and the windage tray both cleaned. A new gasket for the pickup and the pickup and windage tray bag of bolts and then the oil pan also bag of bolts. If you do this on your project, no matter how long it takes you to get the parts together, because I know it takes long for some people, it takes long for most of us, honestly, but if you do this, when you pick it back up, you'll have no problems whatsoever. There's the pan on. I cleaned all the bolts and nuts. Honda bond in the proper locations. And boy, does that pan look good. All right, so the head is completely refreshed. It has the OE ITR valves, intake and exhaust. We had our guy do a full competition valve job on this. And of course, just clean up the rough casting. Now for valve train, we are running the Skunk 2 Alpha Series Springs and Titanium Retainers. The cams we're choosing are the Tuner 2s, and this is like their perfect combination for this. But these parts we've used a lot. This doesn't put a lot of valve train wear on it, not a, you know, not a lot of stress. And of course, it's quiet operation. Typically, the bigger the cam, the more cam noise and lifter noise you get. These are very, very close to OE sound. But of course, good power band all the way through low cam and high cam is good power. So let's flip this over real quick. So the combustion chambers look beautiful. These are always smooth anyway, but when the cylinder head guy went through it, it just kind of takes off any high spots if there is anything. But as you see, these are just perfect. And the surface makes a big difference. His surface in machine is probably one of the best I've seen. It leaves no grain behind. Uh, no reason to address this sometimes we would go over this with some 3000 and a sanding pad just to make sure there's no high spots but this surface is absolutely beautiful look at that tuner twos the stage twos these are the ones that are referred to as the tuner twos super nice reliable cam and again more power but it doesn't have the annoyance of the big lumpy cam or it's not too choppy i'll show you these here in a minute when we get them out another addition to go with these cams would be the skunk 2 lost motion assembly also known as lma these are the much improved ones over the factory ones the factory ones used to be like a tube within a tube and a spring on the inside and they used to stick the idea of these is to help basically the vtec lobe stay in time and in tune with the rest so when the changeover occurs it's much much smoother these are a hair stiffer i don't know the percentage but again we're going by years of using these and it's our own personal r d which is where where i always like to get my data to actually see it i don't like to believe everything you hear but these are going to go in these holes right here so it's always a good idea to mark these when you remove them put them back in the same position as when they came out just because they kind of wear a certain way I don't think there's a negative or a positive to it. It's just something that the book mentions and we do it just for peace of mind more than anything. So we do have a new water pump and timing belt, of course. This tensioner is a low mileage tensioner and it felt okay, but now it is sat. It's not bad, but you can almost feel a little bit of a bearing feel to it. So just precaution. We're going to replace that. The only one I use is the factory OEM Honda one. So we have another one of those coming. It'll be here tomorrow. Then we can put the belt and of course the cams in and the cam gears and all that. But this, uh, I just don't feel that good about it. We're going to change it. So right now, just the little TLC things is basically taking some of the aluminum pieces that get that kind of tarnish in, giving it a clean and a scotch bright, making it look fresher without painting and doing any of the, you know what, you know, like painted engines. I like the raw, clean aluminum plus. It's always easy to keep up on. So a little bit of that TLC stuff to tell you if it's not good. So part of our three o'clock thing. But look how cool this motor is looking. Little things like this and this just really brightens it up. The water pump is on. 
manifold we're going to clean the manifold real good i'll show you that here a little bit later but we're going to pull it apart clean it you know take a little pieces off it i don't think we're going to cut it open and port it just because welding it back together looks a little ugly and just the performance benefit from porting it is it really going to be what matt wants probably not so we're going to leave it together we'll be able to make it really and clean it yeah we're not making a ton of power just making a little bit more than a b18c power 190 ish somewhere on there depending on the header choice and exhaust that he's got the header makes a big difference i think it's all what toda stuff again i think it's toda which it's good stuff but it's not known for big power it's not the big tube header we're not running big cams or uh, you know big valves so we're going for overall balance power so really, even the covers are like brand new they're just dirty but like the rubber seal is perfect back here it's not all melted and deformed i mean all this stuff is great so best thing i found to clean this is just good old soap and water a little bit of dawn and you know just a sponge and it breaks this stuff up and it should come nice and clean i'll do a do a quick test just to make sure if not you can use a little bit harsher detergent and a pressure washer but we'll try the soft stuff first and we'll see how it looks all right a little bit of soap and water now it looks a whole lot better i mean it looks close to brand new even the little rubber cover for the uh timing belt bolt right there it still looks like brand new look at it it's just like so nice to see this stuff like this and this is stuff that people used to yank off back in the day they would insist on leaving this off so they could see their timing gears go and yeah this thing what does that do take that off well this goes behind the timing uh, uh, the timing gears the cams come through this this actually goes this way around and pulls to this it's such a good system because it all fits together i mean it fits look at that it does such a good job at sealing the timing belt from dirt you know why would you take this stuff apart i mean it does it's like lego i mean i gotta sit push that together but it seals that keeps the belt in good shape we are of course putting it all back together the car is getting timing gears on it but once it's done, it's all going to go back together and you're not going to see them. The cam gears are there to adjust the uh, cam overlap to get the best power band. But after that, cover it up, seal it up, keep them clean and secure. All right, so we're mounting these guys right here. We've drilled the bottom of the Mugen bar and put some thread certs in there. I don't want to weld to it if we don't have to, so it was least obtrusive going that way. And then the intake right here, check this thing out and get it in the light. There's our titanium intake. It's a one piece cold air. Look how pretty that looks. So we're gonna go ahead and install that, get the filter on, put the um, strut bar on and assemble these, then we can move. Look. So we just finished the gusset down here. As you see, it's got a bracket there to support the weight of it with a OEM rubber piece, just like they use on the air boxes. So it will support that, give it a little bit of flex. So we can put it on now. All right, so before anybody says anything, this is just the least obtrusive way I can come up with it without, I don't want to weld to that bar. I mean, I'm still a Honda fan. Mugen is still a big deal. Mugen bar, you know, so I don't want to weld anything on it. So what we did is drilled and tapped those. So basically in the event these are moved and put somewhere else the bar there is basically a small five millimeter nut cert in there It's not gonna take away from the look of it Because it's like we, we have nowhere to put these I didn't want to if I had a choice do I drill this or drill that I drill that you can buy one of those and have it shipped to you You can't ship the car to you. You can't fix a hole easily and There's not a lot of room along this back firewall. I, I mean with this threaded uh, holes here I kind of thought of staggering them, but there's not a lot of room. So, I don't know. I Personally, I would bury them somewhere, but I don't know. Again, it's easy to move, but you can kind of see my concern. It's, it's, it's doable. Uh, intake looks fantastic. Engine looks good. Valve cover will really shine, obviously, when it's replaced with the new Japanese valve cover. But that is essentially it. I mean, it's just a an OEM B18C with a little bit more compression, a little bit more cam. So we're going to break it in, break in the clutch, go over everything, check it and start doing some power runs. So just to get a quick look underneath before we put the plastic cover on and see everything looks nice. The power steering belt actually just got dropped off. We've got to put that on next before we move it. You see how nice the pan looks, how nice the header looks. You see the intake, how it tucks up. We kept the filter as high as we could, even though it's the cold air. 
you don't want to run those too low we want to try and get as much height as we can on the we'll double check the oil we I should refinish the dipstick I didn't show that no I'll show it when I get out of here yeah that's the GDM dipstick with a little heat surround piece which is kind of nice so I want to go out on a limb and say I don't like those so whoever wins this go ahead and move those it just makes it look cluttered I don't like it but again, there's nowhere to put it. Matt kind of wants them in show. They are a nice piece, so he doesn't want them hidden. This is actually a heat shield on the JDM guy right there. This is like a little heat shield. And then the yellow that gets uh, all kind of crusty. Let's turn it. Went ahead and got the right size hose and we finished that. Just makes it look a little nicer. And it looks so crisp against that header. That's pretty. It really is. Does that feel like one horsepower? That feels like seven. <laughs> it looks like seven. They do look fancy. 